Hi, everyone. This is Sholay Ekdivan from LMK Clinical Research Consulting. I am um, a member of the TMF Reference Model Steering Committee and so excited to be here with you today. Hi, I'm Donna Dorzinski from Just In Time GCP, also a member of the TMF Reference Model Steering Committee. And we are going to be presenting to you today part two of the TMF. Thank you so much for joining part two of today's training. Let's get started with the TMF reference model, defining the model. So let's start with a couple of definitions. What is the trial master file or the TMF? EU regulation 536 2014 tells us that the sponsor and the investigator shall keep a clinical trial master file or TMF. The clinical trial master file shall at all times contain the essential documents relating to that clinical trial for which verification of the conduct of a clinical trial and the quality of the data generated. It shall be readily available and directly accessible upon request to the member state. So just a couple of things to point out here. Number one, that the sponsor and the investigator must keep a TMF at all times for the clinical trial in which they are uh, conducting. Number two, the clinical trial shall be readily available. And number three, directly accessible upon request. So just a couple of things to highlight from this definition. What are essential documents? So ICH GPP tells us in section eight that essential documents are those documents that individually and collectively permit evaluation of the conduct of a trial and the quality of the data produced. These documents serve to demonstrate the compliance of the investigator, the sponsor, and monitor with the, the standards of good clinical practice and with all applicable regulatory requirements. So let's define the TMF reference model. So we start with that minimum list of essential documents as defined by ICH GCP chapter eight. Then we kind of expand that to include other trial related records that permit the evaluation of the conduct of the trial and the quality of the data produced. That uh, definition may sound familiar because that's directly from ICH. These two combined make up the trial master file or the TMF. Then we have some outline, outlier documents or supporting files such as computer SDLC files, GMP manufacturing files, and vendor selection files. These are typically considered outside the scope of the TMF. You may also have other business records that fall outside of that the scope of the TMS as well. So what is the purpose of the trial master file reference model, the TMS reference model? So it's really fourfold. Number one, standard content. Number two, standard naming. Number three, standard structure. And finally, standard metadata. So let's take a closer look at each one of these. Number one, the standard content. So this is really the industry's opinion on what is kept in the TMF. So as you may have heard in part one, the TMF reference model is made up of volunteers from all around the world. So it's really great to get their insight on what should be in the TMF reference model. The TMF reference model really expands upon the minimum list of documents that are that's found in ICH E6 release two. It's a consistent interpretation based on peer opinion and regulatory feedback. And it avoids scope creep for the trial master file. Have you ever thought, I wonder if this document belongs in the TMF? Well, the TMF reference model answers that question for you. The next purpose of the TMF reference model is standard naming. And this is based on ICH E6 release two, section eight, and industry accepted terminology. 
This avoids one artifact or document um, being referred to using different terms within an organization or between organizations. It has the potential for avoiding company-specific terms. We want to call the same artifact the same thing. Next is standard structure. This is to support paper and electronic systems or a hybrid if you're using both. This facilitates consistent filing and rapid retrieval, which is very important, especially during an audit or an inspection. And it's helpful when responsibility for maintaining different sections of the TMF is distributed across several stakeholders. So for example, the sponsor, the CRO, or consultant. The next purpose is standard metadata. This encourages adoption of good practices to facilitate that document retrieval, which again, is very important, especially during an audit or an inspection. And it encourages consistency across the industry for exchange of content. Now I will turn it over to, to Donna Dorzinski for the structure and content of the model. Thanks, Shule. I'm going to talk a little bit about the actual reference model itself and the 11 zones that make up the reference model. So as you can see, we're kind of organized by functional area, right? So trial management is clearly ClinOps. Central trial documents represent things like medical writing, um, ICFs, protocols, but also clinical operations documents as well. We have our regulatory section, we have our ethics committee and IRB, which is again back with clinical operations. We have site management, um, IPLE trial supplies, that could be either clinical trial materials or clinical ops as well because of the site documents. Safety reporting, that's pretty clear. Uh, central and local testing, those are your, like your laboratories or your uh, other testing uh, groups. Third parties, that's really where we put all of our third party documentation. And then data management and statistics is pretty self-explanatory. So within each of the zones, there are sections. And then within each section, there's um, content that's relevant to a specific activity. So for example, third-party setup. It's all of the different artifacts or document types that are related to that particular section. You'll notice that we, you see a general section here. Within each of the zones, there are general is a general section, and in each general section, there are relevant communications, tracking information, meeting materials, and file notes. And so that provides a section where you can file those types of documents at the zone level. Sections are helpful in terms of classifying content and also searching for artifacts. So artifacts can be things like data files, documents, maybe a video, some type of a media, um, any kind of digitized content. Those are all considered artifacts. It could be one document or it could be lots of different documents. For example, informed consents is an artifact, but you could have different types of informed consents filed in that section. And it also includes associated records. So when we have documentation like translations or QC checklists, maybe document approvals, all of that content can be filed with those artifacts as well. I love this particular section because I really think it helps us figure out where to file things. All of the artifacts have definitions and the definitions provide us the thinking between the different types of documents that might be filed in that particular section. So for example, uh, for a note to file, it explains that the note to file is to document any decision or clarification related to information in that zone. And so it actually gives you an explanation. You can see in data management plan, it also provides for you some examples. So maybe the data quality plan goes there, the CRF design document. So it helps you when you're searching for where to file a document, it provides you some additional information to guide your selection. We've also included the ICH code, and this is really the justification within ICH for that particular content. So you'll see not every single document actually has an ICH link, but the majority of them do. And so that's the source for explaining why that particular document type is required. 
And then we have our sub artifacts and our sub artifacts really provide a next layer of filing. So within an artifact, we might have multiple sub artifacts. So for example, your risk management plan, you could put your plan there, you could put your risk assessment document and you could put your risk log. It allows you to file documents at a lower level of granularity, right? So we don't just put it in risk management plan, but we have that sub artifact, which gives you a little bit more detail. So how does all of this work with the paper TMF? When you're taking the reference model and applying it to the paper TMF, we have travel le trial level files, we have country level files per country, and then we have site level files. So we organize all the trial documents together, and then each country has its own documents. So for example, the US would have all of the documents related to the US file there. So all of the different zones and um, sections and artifacts would be filed within that country. And then we carry it one level lower to the site, right? So each site has its own collection of documents. And that really helps you file your paper records in a way that's easily retrievable during an inspection, but also as you might be doing your completeness review or if you're simply just looking for documents. So how do we actually apply it when we create a paper uh, TMF? And so what we do is we wanna be able to filter um, in that Excel. So you actually take your Excel and you filter for all the trial content. And then that tells you what particular artifacts are relevant for that content. So here we have an example where we filtered for country level and we've identified all of the country specific documents. So who controls the versions of the reference model? So there's a change control board. Um, and this is the structure as of March 2021. There are 15 members with Kelly Robinson as the uh, chair and Joanne Malia as the deputy chair. The deliverables are that they meet twice a month. They have a change control procedure. There's a RACI that identifies who's responsible for what. And then of course there's a change control tracker. Um, their job is to review and categorize all of the different change requests. And then they triage these change requests to the different to the different zone teams. And then the zone teams actually make their recommendation. From there, the change control board actually de delivers the new versions of the reference model. So just to kind of explain the version definition, the maintenance release would be like version 3.0.1. And that's like maybe a minor change, right? So like a, uh, maybe addition of a sub artifact, a clarification. Then we have a minor release, which is just 3.1. That's where we have a substantial change in content, but there's no compatibility issues, um, really maybe addition of optional column where, when we added milestones. A major release is where we are likely to have some compatibility issues and it's a pretty significant change. You don't actually, you don't actually need to be working on the latest version. What's important is that you understand your configuration and your configuration works for your organization. So what are some of the benefits that we gain by implementing? Well, first of all, it standardizes your company content and structure and it limits customization, right? So we don't wanna customize it substantially. We wanna basically follow the regulatory requirements and by aligning with the reference model, we know that it's going to be, and for an inspector, it will be consistent across companies. Um, oftentimes company specific requirements are driven by legacy or tradition or personal opinion. The reference model kind of removes all of that and kind of creates a starting point. Um, it also simplifies the engagement of CROs so that if your CRO is using the reference model and you are using the reference model, the configuration should be very similar. And then lastly, it helps you when you want to bring multiple TMFs into a single TMF structure, whether you do it in real time or at different intervals over the life of the study. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions about the material that Cholet or I presented, we ask you to join our discussion group at tmfreferencemodel.com slash register. It's a great opportunity to share your knowledge, to network, and to just have too much fun. And if you would like to join the TMF Reference Model Project team, but be prepared to work, feel free to click on the link tmfrefmodel.com Slash, or excuse me, slash groups, slash IO, G main, the link below. Thank you so much.